Okay, so it is 1230 and we are going to get going. Um, once again, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Ben Clark. I'm the archivist here at the Marathon County Historical Society, um, handling some of the technical stuff this afternoon. Um, we are going to be going uh, in a second to um, Gary Gisselman, who is our librarian um, and historian here at the Marathon County Historical Society. Um, and he's going to be telling us about the Honorable Louis Marchetti, who is a person that you should know, which is the kind of theme for um, the, the few weeks that we're doing here. Um, before we jump to Gary, though, I just want to let you know, uh, we will have a chance to have some question and answer. So if there's any thoughts that come to mind while you're watching this, please encourage you to do leave those in the comment section or the chat section, um, which you can find depending either below or maybe to the right, um, depending on what platform you're viewing on. Um, and of course, we welcome any feedback that you guys have um, watching this after the fact as well as live. Um, so yeah, with that, um, I'm going to get Gary back in the call here. Thank Great. you very much, Ben. And, uh, the, and uh, thank you again for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, it's my honor uh, and privilege really to um, speak a little bit this afternoon about uh, one of the historians of, um, of uh, Marathon County. Um, uh, a, fa a famous historian of this, of this county. Um, and uh, he led a civic life also, which we'll talk a little bit about, but we'll also talk about um, the book that he wrote on the history of Marathon County. Uh, Louis Marchetti, uh, 1846 to 1931. He was born in Vienna, Austria, January 21st, 1846. Came to us in 1867 as a young person uh, on the steamship Herman. Uh, we know a little, bit, a little bit about his growing up in, in Austria, as well as his arrival into, into Wausau. We feel that perhaps he was drawn to Wassa because of the strong German community. We're not quite sure. But we know that uh, in 1867, he arrived in Wassa, took a variety of jobs as sawmill worker, bookkeeper, teacher, teacher in a country school, uh, became heavily involved with the community life. Uh, in fact, so in such a short time, he was appointed a street commissioner in 1871 and then he quickly went on to be elected clerk of circuit court in 1874. And he thus became his, uh, became a, a judge really uh, in 1877, elected first municipal judge, uh, admitted to the county bar in 1879. Now you notice that he became a judge before he was admitted to the county bar. Uh, can't explain that, but these are the dates that we were given. And then also in 1879, he was a judge of the municipal court and judge of Marathon County. So he took a very active civic role very soon after coming to Wausau, most likely appealing to the German community, um, uh, just strong German language community. And I think that that was a big part of his popularity. He was really a civic person. He was really involved with the community almost from day one. Um, Later on, he became uh, a register of the land office, appointed by President Cleveland in 1893. Uh, soon became mayor of Wausau in 1901. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, and then after he left the mayor's office from 1905, pretty much until 1928, uh, he was a municipal judge. And then after that, he was a judge of the police court until his death. Um, so again, a strong judicial career, uh, heavily involved with the community. Uh, during this time, he was also a, a, a practicing lawyer uh, with two firms, Bardeen, Milray, and Marchetti, and then also with Milray, Marchetti, and Bird, uh, st two strong uh, law firms in this community, and they had their offices on the second floor of the Marathon County Bank Building on the corner of 3rd and Jefferson in downtown Wassa. But also during this time, one of the highlights of his judicial career was in 1893, uh, 
as the county was starting to ponder the building of an insane asylum, uh, Judge Marchetti wrote uh, an opinion that was uh, given to the county board strongly urging um, the, the building of this, of this county insane asylum. And, uh, and it had such a great influence, in fact, that the Marathon County Board, upon the recommendation of Judge Marchetti, uh, continued, uh, uh, made the plans for the construction of the building, and Judge Marchetti was added to the building committee uh, as an honorable member. Again, his voice, a very strong voice in this community as well as in this county, um, urging the building of the insane asylum. Uh, during this time also, uh, we have to mention that Louis Marchetti uh, married Emma Plish in 1872. They went on to have two children, Irwin and Emma. Uh, again, a little bit now talking about his mayoral uh, duties when he became mayor in 1901. This is City Hall as it looked when he was mayor of the city in 1901. This is on Washington Street, uh, long gone, of course. Uh, we're facing southwest, the railroad is a little bit to your right. Uh, but this was the fine city hall that the city had uh, built, and he took his offices when he was mayor in 1901. During his term as mayor uh, from 1901 to 1905, there were some things that credit to his uh, administration a land acquired and donation accepted from Andrew Carnegie for the new public library. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Cemetery land on Grand Avenue was deeded to the Cemetery Association so the city no longer had uh, governing responsibility for that pine, what came to be called Pine Grove Cemetery. He was noted for the great care he gave to the maintenance of streets and garbage grounds near Tannery purchased. Now this was listed as one of his goals. Uh, you, know, you know, it's odd to say that this was one of his accomplishments, but at that time, most likely in the early 1900s, that was great that we found some garbage grounds. Um, and then he also was instrumental in acquiring land for the new city hall. The new city hall would find its way at the end of Third Street. Um, the uh, Forest Street at the end of Third Street. Eventually, in, uh, in the next decade, uh, this uh, city hall was built on, on Forest Street at the end of Third Street. Louis Marchetti was also on the library board uh, at this time, and he was very instrumental in, as well as during his term in acquiring the land for the public library for, from the Alexanders. But he was also instrumental uh, as the chair of the library board to accept money from the Andrew Carnegie people for the construction of this new library built in 1907, uh, designed by George Mayer. Uh, this was real, a true landmark in the city until in the 1960s um, when it was when they got a new facelift and remodeling done to it. I wanna speak a little bit also about his house, uh, the Marchetti Mansion now on Grand Avenue, um, built in 1878, uh, built originally at 120 Grand Avenue. Uh, it's his second empire architectural style, including the mansard roof, squared turret with Doric pilasters, uh, a very, uh, and the tower sort of the, on the, on the right hand, sort of a square tower, uh, sort of a very distinguished uh, second empire house in the city. Very few um, of these houses um, remain in the, in the city. Uh, it's, it is on the National Register of Historic Places. Moved to 11, I'm sorry, uh, 11, the 100 block of Grand Street, 19, 93, later moved back to Grand Avenue at 921 Grand Avenue, uh, much later. Now it sits on Grand Avenue. A little fine, a picture of the fine details, the, the, uh, the siding, the fishtail siding, uh, uh, a, great, a great house um, in the neighborhood of Grand Avenue when it was built. It did through the years um, 
become an apartment house and it de de deteriorate. Uh, it is, uh, since it has been moved at, back to Grand Avenue, uh, it is now an antique place, um, but it still um, it still maintains many of the the features of that Second Empire House. Mention this uh, because this was I mentioned the John Ringel House really right next door to it when it was built. John Ringel um, built this house in 1877. Uh, John Ringel and Louis Marchetti were quite close as far as being in the Democratic Party, uh, fellow Germans, um, and they had their house. I'm sure that there was a lot of kibitzing on the Division Alley uh, right next to it. Um, uh, great, great partners through a lot of different political actions through the years of, of uh, John Ringel in this house. A little bit of a note on Brian itself. Um, Brian, William Jennings Brian coming to Wausau. I show this uh, newspaper article as, as a demonstration of Louis Marchetti's heavily involvement with the, with the Democratic Party. Uh, uh, as you may see on the, uh, on the article itself, the Committee of Businessmen headed by Judge Louis Marchetti um, brought in William Jennings Bryan, a strong Democrat. Um, Louis Marchetti was identified with the Democratic Party pretty much throughout his entire political uh, life here in Wassa. Again, mass, mass meeting John, John Carroll for governor, Democratic candidate for governor, paid advertisement paid for by Louis Marchetti. Uh, again, Louis's uh, uh, strong involvement with the Democratic Party. But then of course we come to the highlight of uh, Mr. Marchetti's career. It's his history of Marathon County. Um, Judge Marchetti's book is a great addition to the literature of the state. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But we just want to say that, uh, you know, talk that his civic involvement was, of course, very, very important. Being a judge, uh, he was a civic. But really, when it comes to the longevity of his, of his career, uh, it was the, his history of Marathon County, um, written in 1913, that uh, has proven to be a valuable as a lasting tribute to his memory. It is a complete record of the early history of Marathon County that we have, and we are very thankful that Marchetti took it upon himself to compile and write this history. As part of the introductory remarks in this book, Marchetti states, this book is written with the intention to enable younger generations to see the county where it was, where it was born, and, who's the, and those who have come to live here as it was in its original state to enable them to see and understand the causes which have changed the grim dark forest, majestic and forbidding though it looked, long supposed to be unfit for the habitation of the white man because of its supposed infiniteness of soil for agricultural purposes, into the present state, teeming with culture, with commerce and manufactures. And that's what he did. He provided a rich study of Marathon County, its towns, villages, and cities. Reading this book, you soon become aware of the things that mattered to the generations of people that Marchetti recounts. The schools, the churches, the small shops, the cheese houses, the government leaders, the clubs, and streets of communities. Marchetti knew these people, and he gave account of their many lives all trying to make it in first the pinery, then the clear land, and then the small and growing settlements throughout Marathon County. These people are the story of Marathon County, and Marchetti tells a story like no one else did. Hundreds of individual stories. And I, let me just, um, and what I have on slide is, I want to just take a note of how he talks how he talked about the people of Marathon County. And a big part of his book is the talking about the towns, 
the rural places of Marathon County. And I'm just gonna take a couple minutes talking about the town of Cleveland. This town was set off from the town of Mosinee, November 14th, 1848, 1840, I'm sorry, 1884, and organized in the spring of 1885, electing its town officers with Edwin Hayes as chair, and then going on. Grover Cleveland had been elected president in the same fall, and the town honored him by taking his name in embraces Township 27, Range 4 East. And then he goes on to say, one sawmill doing custom sawing exists in this town and is zoned by Albert Nearing. There are two cheese factories having a large output of schoolhouses. There are four, one in each district. A German evangelical and reformed congregation has a fine frame church, building and pastorage, where Reverend Schradel is a resident minister a strong united congregation existing for about 23 years. So uh, quite, a, quite a description. And he does this for the towns of Marathon County. So if you have a reason and any kind of a reason to investigate or be a part of that history, you can see it in Judge Marchetti's book. A good part of his book is also devoted to the people of Marathon County. A lot of biographies, you're gonna find a lot of biographies. And, and I'll quickly just, Louis Radetzky. You know, so here we have a little bit of a biography of Mr. Radetzky. They were natives of Germany coming to Wisconsin, remained in the home farm during boyhood and youth, attended the county's country schools, and then learned his trade at Edgar, you know, married Alma. So here, you know, members of Zion Lutheran Church, you know, so he speaks to everyone in Marathon County. A lot of people in the city of Wausau, of course, but a lot of different folks within, within the county. And if you have a, a need to visit or to investigate or to look for a history of a town, the history of a person. Mr. Marchetti's history of Marathon County is where you go. And we are really indebted to him writing this book in 1913. He pretty much covers the, uh, the whole history, the people, the towns. Uh, and he also gives a street narrative of the city of Wassa. So what was walking down Third Street like uh, during Judge Marchetti's time. You'll find it in his history of Marathon County. I just wanna mention a couple of, um, I just wanna mention Jim Lawrence's and Howard Cleeter's Woodlot and Ballot Box as a book that, can, that was written in, 19, in the late 1970s as a companion really. Um, these authors take on Marath the history of Marathon County in the 20th century. So, um, you know, a companion, but uh, not to the full extent that Judge Marchetti um, wrote about. And the other book on the history of Marathon County is uh, The Story of Wassa and Marathon County, written by Michael Cronowetter, published in 1984. Um, again, another story, comp you know, that tells a lot of the different stories the history of a variety of things throughout Marathon County, also featuring a lot of individual histories of companies, uh, again, published in 1984, not to the extent of Judge Marchetti. Judge Marchetti really, in his history, does excellent service to the towns, cities, villages, and people of, uh, of Marathon County. So with that, so with that, I close. I was a great privilege to uh, speak a little bit about Judge Marchetti. Uh, he has really set the tone for anybody that really wants to write uh, about Marathon County. He, obviously, he loved the people. He loved being here. Uh, he fit very well in. He was a judge, elected many years. Uh, but I think a final testament is his history of Marathon County that we, uh, that we have today. 
Um, so with that, I conclude. Uh, uh, if you need a book about early Marathon County history, uh, find Judge Marchetti's. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ben. And again, if there's comments or questions, we'll be free to uh, answer those. Yeah, a couple comments here. Um, well, Kathy Volkman um, has, has asked if there's any descendants left in his in the area of of Mr. Marchetti. We do not know of any. Um, Yeah. Um, she also points out, you know, how how it's um, how great the book is. And I was going to mention, um, if you're interested in in actually reading the book itself, um, we have a couple copies here, and, and you know, the li public library and things like that. But um, the State Historical Society has actually already digitized it. So, um, and actually, maybe I'll just drop a link in the the chat here. Um, if you're interested in going through, it's all been digitized and you can, you know, go through and read it for yourself, um, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I know as, as Gary kind of mentioned, um, or maybe alluded to, I, I think whenever we get a question about something in Marathon County's history from this era, that's generally the first place we go because he just covers so much and he does a great job of summing things up. Uh, maybe not as a final source, sometimes you do have to double check things, but um, yeah. Um, oh, let's see, some, maybe another question here. Um, uh, Mary Roosh asked, uh, what kind of court cases did the judge typically hear? Was it like land cases or, um, you know, criminal, civil Crim stuff? Civil cases, I think pretty much the whole realm of, of judicial, um, they, he may have, may have been the only judge, so a lot of civil, a lot of criminal, of course, traffic cases, um, a variety of things. He ended his career as a tra as a police judge, so I'm sure that that was mostly involved with the traffic and, um, but mostly civic, and civil judgments as well as criminal judgments. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Um, we had a number of other comments, um, Dan. Um, on Facebook and uh, Danielle, I think, and yeah, um, on YouTube, just thank, um, just kind of enthusiastic thanking us for this. So we see you. Thank you for for those comments as well. Uh, but I think that looks like it's it's kind of the extent of that, which is which is great. Um, get done here at, at just before one o'clock. Um, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be back next week with Helen Ohm, um, twelve thirty on Thursday. Thank you.